Well, Steph, when I talked about you in the introduction, uh, you defined the object of war as acquiring resources, influence, and territory uh, to project national will. And that is the definition of war. You also have been involved in a study, and I think you may have been involved in this as well, um, China, the three warfares. That's correct, yeah. And in it, you define these three warfares as not the way we traditionally think of it as getting out the, the ships and the guns and the airplanes, yeah. but rather something else. Right. Um, the, the Chinese have been very uh, clever <clears throat> in projecting power through the media, through psychological intimidation, and through manipulation of the law. Uh, they call it lawfare. And uh, Jim just mentioned the, the issue in the, the courts uh, two years ago when China was brought to the International uh, Tribunal on Law of the Sea uh, by the Philippines, who claimed that China was intruding on their territory in the South China Sea. China lost that case, and uh, as, as Jim said, they simply ignored it. They would not accept the conclusions, and they just simply moved on. Well, what does that mean? It means that the Chinese are quite happy to operate outside the law, that they, are not, they do not feel constrained by uh, the law as promulgated. And this is a problem. I mean, it's been a problem in dealing with them all the way along when they promised not to militarize the islands in the South China Sea. President Xi, Xi Jinping, stood in the Rose Garden, made that promise to the American government and the people, and then he went right ahead and put missiles and ships and everything else on, on these islands. Well, you get at something. They don't, they have a view of themselves as, what, an empire? Not, empire is not the right word. A, uh, what, what middle is, kingdom is what they middle call kingdom. it. Middle kingdom, yeah. And a middle kingdom does, is, doesn't have a relationship with other states the way European states think of it as we respect your territory, yeah. we respect our, they, vice versa. But they don't see it that way. They think if there's a middle kingdom, there are no other states. They are the state. They're the suzerain power. They're, everybody else is the what power? The suzerain power. A, okay. A, a, uh, sort of the, the first among equals, the big brother with the little brothers around who recognize it and, and bring tribute to, to the emperor in, in Beijing and, and bow down before it. Uh, and that's what they're used to. And they lost that back in the 19th century, and they resented it. And so they are a, essentially a revanchist power that aims to regain what they, what they lost when uh, the Europeans came in and, and forced them to their knees. And they feel very resentful of what the West has done. They're going to change that any way they can. Uh, I think another thing that to point out is that when China makes an agreement, they view it as temporary. You know, temporary may be 10 or 20 years, but they may be sort of stopped from wherever they're going, and then they're still going to keep pushing. The goal never changes. It's I'm reminded of the story about uh, Henry Kissinger asking Chow and Lai what he thought of uh, the French Revolution. And Chow and I said, it's too soon to tell. The Chinese have a very long, <laughs> long time horizon. And so if, even if we reach agreement with China, we should not expect them to unilaterally hold to that agreement. They'll, they'll do whatever they have to do until they can get a chance to start pushing back again. Yeah, I worked, with, I worked on Wall Street, and one of the, probably should go on name, one of the very successful financier deal guys on Wall Street once informed me, he said, you know these contract, this contract, is just the basis for our next negotiation. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that's. So everything. you're familiar with. That. I'm very familiar. <laughs> right here, right here, in the right here on the good old USA. But but you know the the last point you made, Jim, uh, about um, it, all of this being temporary or subject to political and other change. That's exactly what the argument is about right now in Beijing, as these latest round of talks conclude, because the U.S. side wants concrete timetables for China to act on its commitments, and they want to have ways of verifying that, and the Chinese, of course, are very hesitant to provide it. 